Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to improve your lighting from this to this. Now we will be achieving these effects using light probes right inside of Blender. So here I am in my scene that I just modeled. It has a platform and a bunch of lights. The most important objects in the scene are of course the lights. The materials are an extra but I do recommend texturing your objects as I've mentioned in my previous videos. So the scene on itself looks pretty good. You know, you can see the lights reflecting off of the walls and the floor. I already turned on screen space reflections. If I turn everything off here, you can see how the scene looks much flatter. I won't be talking about these settings as I've covered them before in my video about lighting in Eevee. So you can check out that video to know how I set up a scene like this. All right, so this is basically the last 10% to finish your scene. So there are three types of light probes. If I press Shift A, and under Light Probe, you can see the Reflection Cube Map, Reflection Plane, and Iridian's Volume. But let's start off with the Reflection Cube Map. As you can see, it has the form of a sphere, and you know we could put it inside of a sphere, scale it down so it has roughly the same size and under your render settings go to indirect lighting and press bake cube map only and there you go it has baked the reflections on the sphere like the sphere over here the lights on the ceiling and all of that now this works very nice on spherical objects but you can use them on any object that isn't perfectly flat so moving on to the second light probe, which is the reflection plane. Now this is perfect for walls, floors, and all that stuff. So I'm just going to select my floor here. And position my reflection plane. And then I'm going to scale it up. So it matches the room perfectly. And then what I'm going to do is move it up ever so slightly because if it's not properly positioned it will look like a mess so you might want to isolate just the reflection plane in the room the way you do that is you select your reflection plane and the room and you hit forward slash so what i'm essentially looking for is that the center of my reflection plane aligns with the floor of my room like that that should work so here's the before and after see now the last light probe is probably the most complex one and it is the iridians volume and if i make one you can see a box with a whole lot of dots so what this light probe does is it will bake the lighting on each point and interpolate in between and you're able to have more resolution as it's called so more points but be mindful as this will be more taxing on your computer so similar to the reflection probe you want to make sure it fits the size and the shape of your room so i'm mainly looking at the dots here now as i shape this i'm starting to get into a problem because I have a room with a second level over here and these dots are cutting through the mesh which is not something we want because at that point we're starting to see artifacts so ideally what you would want to do is create one light probe for one side of the room and one for the other side that's more isolated to just that bit. And you could go even more specific and do one for every room. But that really depends on what the camera sees. If the camera isn't panning over or entering any of these rooms, it's really not important to look and see the lighting inside of it. And finally, I can create one for down here. Although this will be mostly in the shade, so it's not as important. 
Okay, finally I will go back to the indirect lighting. Set your settings to however you want it. And then press bake indirect lighting. Alright, so I baked out the lighting in my scene. I changed some settings around. I set my diffuse bounces to 12 and the cube map size to 1k. Now this will bump up the baking times, but at the same time you're getting a much better quality. And for instance, this frosty glass shader works really well when I put in the light probe. You see? And in camera as well, it looks really nice. And you can definitely combine this with the realistic bokeh effect that I showcased in my previous tutorial on how to do that in Eevee and get even better results out of this. So next week I'll be making a showcase video using the knowledge that I covered in my previous tutorials. So be on the lookout for that one. Subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on the notifications, like, all of that. See you in the next one.